Hi, John here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to install a fuel gauge in a fuel tank that never had one. The customer would really like one, so that's what he's going to get. So follow along and see how I do it. So this is the fuel sender and gauge kit that I picked out for this job. Uh, I had looked at the other one that was in the other airframe. It was rusty and dirty and gross, and you have to calibrate it and fiddle with it forever probably to make it read right so this I think is really cool so this being the top where the unit goes on the fuel tank it comes with a gasket um, and this is the float it goes up and down that would represent full and that would represent empty of course uh, because this is a square tank I mean when it's in the middle it should be half a tank so no calibration stuff to fiddle it around with, so I'm really happy with that. I'm expecting this to work very, very well. Haven't used this setup before, but so far I'm really, really impressed. Um, and as I said, fuel gauge, pretty nice looking. Um, and it comes with a little wire harness to plug in the back, which is nice. Um, and uh, these two wires that come uh, run off of the sending unit are just resistance. So uh, it has... Um, well, I can't remember, it was written down. I checked it already to make sure that it works. It works perfect, it's right to spec for the resistance when it's full and the resistance when it's right empty. So uh, as I said, I don't expect there to be big calibration issues with this. Uh, this should actually just go in and, and work. Let's carry on with the installation. Uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'll use the, the gasket here for a template. I'm gonna figure out exactly where on the top of the tank I wanna put it. I'll mark it all out and uh, then we'll drill the inch and a half uh, hole. Oh, there we go. Nice inch and a half hole. As you can see, I've got the uh, spots marked out for the fasteners to go to hold the gauge in. Uh, next thing to do now is going to be to see, yeah, that's pretty rough. There's some pieces hanging on the bottom there. So I'll go around this with my chamfering tool. We get any of the bigger pieces off, the loose pieces, yes. Okay, there's a few. Don't want those uh, to end up in the fuel tank. And then I got a piece of fine uh, scotch right here. And uh, let's go around here and see how that turns out. Well, that's good. There's no little loose bits in there anymore, so that's great. I don't want anything to, you know, five months down the way here to fall off there and end up down in the bottom of the fuel tank. So now that we've got our hole in the top, let's see what we have when we look down inside. And, oh my goodness, it is pretty gross. I see in the, uh, in the corner there, uh, the tank is the, the plug that came out of the hole that I drilled. It fell under the hole saw and landed in the bottom, and that's fine. Uh, it's got to come out, obviously. Uh, however, look at the rest of the gungeon there. So this really needs to be scrubbed and scrubbed until it's spotless inside. Uh, this uh, airframe's been sitting around for a long time, so I imagine that's uh, all that varnish and, and gunk that comes when all the old fuel evaporates or goes rancid. So anyway, uh, next step is going to take the tank um, out. So we've undone the uh, bolt from here. And this is very light and very thin and it's warm in here so I'm not afraid of flexing this fiberglass at all. However, it's getting stopped by the suspension strut here. And I'm going to take this bolt out so that uh, it'll not be in the way. However, look at the way this bolt's in here. Typically on an airplane, the bolts face down and the nut goes on the bottom. With the nut, if the nut ever fell off of this, it would just vibrate and gravity would make it fall right out. So I'm gonna put it back in the other way after. But anyway, we'll carry on and see if we can get this gas tank out. Okay, so now that struts out of the way, very gently and slowly move this down. It's all loose at the front because the instrument panel is out and that actually helps it all move. Got it out! Woohoo! 
So I drilled, uh, pre-drilled the hole, and uh, I know uh, I do this all the time. It's plastic, and I know you shouldn't use a tap in a drill, but anyway, we we'll run it through the hole here. And we'll reverse it out. And then we'll take our last screw and do a test fit. And look at that, perfect. Okay, of course there's no gasket in there. I have to take it out again because I gotta wash it all out. Well, the outside of it certainly looks a lot better now that I've gave it a, a good rinse over. And let's see what we have inside. So there we go. Well, you can see some water droplets in there, but that's okay. It'll all dry up in a couple of days, uh, all naturally before I put it back in. All the uh, gunge is cleaned out, which is exactly what I wanted. So, uh, next step is uh, install the gasket and the uh, sending unit and put it all together. Then I'll put the uh, fuel tank back in the aircraft. Next time we'll check out the upgraded instrument panel and get this big spaghetti pile of wires here hooked up and make everything work. See you then.